powerful, impactful, life-changing. This is the teaching ministry of Apostle Faith Manobuera, where supernatural things are happening through the anointed Word of God. This prolific preacher and dynamic teacher of God's Word is changing lives all over the world. Are you ready? Because your life will never be the same. Your success is directly related to your submission to God's Word. We are not here to do what we think or feel. We are here to do what God's Word has approved. If you're going to succeed in life, God must come first in everything you do. Faith in God does not fail because its origin is God. Here is Apostle Faith Man Obweda. Glory be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. And today we'll be sharing something I believe that has the potential to transform your life and inspire you to make a difference. How to prosper by the word. God has given us his word as the foundation for true prosperity. The word of God is a proof that we can have dominion and we can reign in life. God wants us to prosper, but he wants this prosperity to be a product of his word. He wants us to prosper, and he wants this prosperity to be the product of his word. It is not every prosperity or success that glorifies God. The prosperity or the success that glorifies God is the prosperity that emanates from His Word. The prosperity that is the product of action according to His Word. Prospering by the Word begins with your soul prospering in the Word. If your soul is not prospering in God's Word, you can truly prosper according to the will of God. I'd like us to look at Third John verse 2. Third John verse 2. Praise the Lord. In Third John verse 2. Third John verse 2. Third John is after Second John. Praise the Lord. Okay. It's called the Epistle of John. In 3 John verse 2, it said, Beloved, I wish above all things that I may prosper. He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that I may prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Now, prospering begins... Financial prosperity, health prosperity, whatever form of prosperity that is consistent with God's word, begins with the prospering of your soul. If your soul is not prospering in God's word, you won't be able to prosper in other areas of your life. That was why I said, I wish above all things that I may prosper. Even as your soul prospers, your soul is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotion. Your soul is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotion. And the prosperity of your soul begins with you internalizing the word of God. It begins with you having God's word in you. If we don't internalize God's word, taking the word of God right inside of us, it will be difficult for us to prosper in other areas of our life. When Joshua took over the leadership responsibility from Moses, in Joshua 1 verse, 7, 1 verse 8, sorry, Joshua 1 verse 8, the word of the Lord came to Joshua and said, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but thou shalt meditate during day and night, 
and you will make your way prosperous. How are you going to be prosperous? You're going to be prosperous when you meditate on the word of the Lord. This is how to prosper. Is it meditation can open the door of greater insight and revelation. So when we meditate on God's word, we have a great opportunity of experiencing revelations, wisdom, inspiration, and insight that can inspire us to move in the direction of the will of God. Your soul prospering opens the door for financial prosperity. Prospering by the word, now we'll take it to the next level. For we to prosper by the word, we must become doers of the word. You know, the doers of the word are the people who are blessed. Not just those who hear the word. So many people hear the word, but they are not doers of the word. I like us to look at uh, James chapter one, James chapter one, verse twenty-one. James chapter one, verse twenty-one. He said, "Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word." Receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. The engrafted word is what is able to save your soul. It is the engrafted word that is able to save your soul. So he said, lay about, he said, lay about the filthiness, the superfluity, and receive with meekness. How do we receive the word of God? We receive the word of God with meekness. And if I don't receive God's word with meekness, I can prosper in God's will. If I don't receive God's word with meekness, I can prosper with God's will, in God's will. So he said, receive the word of God with meekness, which is able to save your soul. You know, we shared in top John verse 2, he said, I wish above all things that I may prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Even as your soul prospers, so that the, the prosperity of your soul is the key to true success. We cannot truly have success if our soul is not prospering in the direction of his will. And for the soul to prosper, Romans 12, verse 2, Romans 12, verse 2, he said, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. He said, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. If the mind is not renewed, it will be difficult to fulfill your purpose. Unrenewed mind cannot tap into the purpose of God. All renewed mind will serve as a limitation to purpose. All renewed mind can serve as a stronghold, stopping an individual from reaching their full potential. So our mind has to be renewed with God's word, and that is the foundation of true prosperity. You know, he said in Romans 12, verse 2, he said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to prove that which is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. If our mind is not renewed with God's word, it will be difficult for we to live in the blessing. It will be difficult for us to function in the blessing. Unrenewed mind cannot tap into the will of God. Unrenewed mind cannot connect with the principles of the kingdom. So if you're truly going to connect with the principles of the kingdom of God, your mind must be renewed with God's word. So in James chapter 1, verse 22, James 1, 22, he said, But be ye doers of the word. Be ye doers. This is the key to prospering, to financial prosperity, to emotional prosperity to mental prosperity, to overcoming selfishness, self-centered attitude. He said, but be ye doers of the word. Now, the doers of the word are the people who apply the word. 
the doers of the word are people who apply the word. If you look at John Gospel chapter 8 from verse 30 to 32, why Jesus was sharing, he said, to those Jews who believe in his word, he said, if you continue in my word, you will be my disciples indeed. Continuity in God's word is a proof that you are a true disciple. Continuity in God's word. A lot of people may not continue in God's word because they lack the understanding of what God wants them to experience. Continuity in God's word is the proof that you're a true disciple. So God expects you to continue in the word. In good times, in bad times, when it looks like nothing is happening, he expects you to continue in the word. He expects you to abide in the word. He expects you to think from the word. He expects you to act from the word. He expects you to function from the word. He expects you to flow from the word. You cannot truly flow from the word. You cannot truly think from the word. You cannot truly prosper from the word except you abide in the word. If you don't abide in the word, you cannot produce from the word. If you don't abide in the word, you cannot excel in the word. If you don't abide in the word, you cannot produce from the word. So abiding in God's word is the doorway to supernatural prosperity, is the, is the, is the pathway to also mental uh, stability, to be stable mentally, stable emotionally, is directly related to the application of God's word. The purpose of hearing all of this teaching is for one is one purpose application application when you hear you apply when you hear you apply apply to your finances apply to your job apply to your relationship apply to your way of doing things it is the application of God's word that transforms your life it is the application of God's word that transforms your thinking and inspire you to take the lead in the direction of God's will. God doesn't want me to think contrary to his word. He wants me to think in the direction of his word. God is not expecting me to think of his word. God is expecting me to think from his word. And this is the key to strategic living to effective living, to being productive in life. So here, he said in James chapter 1, verse 22, he said, But ye, but be ye the doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own self. There are people who are hearers only. They only hear God's word, but they don't apply it. But transformation is in application. Transformation is in application. You cannot truly experience transformation when you don't get involved in the application of the word. This is how we prosper. Application of the word, applying the word irrespective of what you're going through in your job, in your finances. Keep doing the word. Keep, this is the best way to live. This is the best way. There is no exciting life outside of God's word. No exciting life. There is no life I can say is exciting except life in the word. Except life that is consistent with God's word. I can say life in sin is exciting because sin comes with death. It comes with pressure. It comes with frustration. But the, a life of holiness comes with so much honor, so much peace so much rest so it said here that the doers of the word he said the doers of the word uh, he said but be ye doers of the word and not just hear us only deceiving your own self verse 23 uh verse 23 said for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass for he beholdeth himself and go at his way and straight away forget it what manner of man he is. But whosoever that looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue daring, he be not a forgetful hearer. God is calling us not to be forgetful hearer. He wants us to be people who hear and retain the word of God in our spirit. He said, doesn't want us to be forgetful hearers, but a doer of the work. 
which shall, this man shall be blessed a doer of the work I think it should be a doer of the word, but I'm seeing a doer of the work here. He said, this man shall be blessed in his deed. This man shall be blessed in his deed. This is how you prosper in the word. By applying the word of God to your life, by making the word of God the foundation for everything you do. If you look at Deuteronomy 28, in Deuteronomy 28, he said, if you hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, he will set you on high above all the nations of the earth if you are hacking. You know, some people don't hack and he said, but if you hack in, he will set you on high. That was the picture of the old covenant in when it comes to prosperity. If the people of God was going to prosper, they needed to be doers of the word. Can I say this to you? The application of God's word is the foundation for true prosperity. The application of God's word is the foundation for true prosperity. God wants you to prosper. God wants you to succeed, but he wants you to prosper according to his word. He doesn't want you to prosper and have pressure and have anxiety and have uh, depression. He doesn't want that. He wants you to prosper in joy. He wants you to prosper in the direction of his will. He doesn't want you to prosper with stress, with pressure, with all those things. No, you know, the blessings of the Lord make it rich and have no sorrow. The blessing of the Lord. So we are called into the blessed life. The blessed life is that life that emanates from the nature of the Father God. That is the blessed life. So we are called into the blessed life. We are called Ephesians 1 verse 3. In Ephesians 1 verse 3, it said, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us. Wow, that is powerful. But we need to function from the blessing consciousness who had blessed us. That simply means the blessing has been invested into our life, into our future, and into our purpose. Who has blessed us from the blessing we give, from the blessing we will speak from the blessing will function we are blessed people we are not trying to be blessed we are not about to be blessed according to Ephesians 1 verse 3 he has already blessed us already empowered us so we are blessed people who have the identity of the blessing whenever people look at us they see us as the blessed generation a generation of blessed people those who function from the revelation of the will of God can I say this to you you are blessed in your going out you are blessed in your coming in when you begin to give your tithes give your offering partner you know sow your seed you know it's one of the channels that God used in prospering us but when we begin to give when we begin to sow it's one of the channels that God used in prospering us another channel God used in prospering us is listening to the leading of the spirit is listening to the leading of the spirit that's another channel that god can use to bless us when we listen to the holy spirit follow his leading it can lead to our financial prosperity our success in different areas of life another key to god uh, prospering us is the key of uh, obedience to his will obedience to his counsel obedience to what he's instructing us to do in every season go open the door of supernatural increase and prosperity can i say this to you you are called into the blessed life don't accept defeat don't give up don't quit the blessing is the will of god for you prospering by the word God's word works. Put it first, think it, allow it to influence your thinking, and let your lifestyle emanate from the word of God. That will be the foundation for productive living and for maximizing your purpose. I strongly believe that prosperity is God's will for your life. And he wants you to prosper in all things. Second Corinthians 9 verse 8 is that God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you're always having all sufficiency. Father, we thank you this morning. I pray for everyone watching this broadcast from around the world that your blessings be upon them and inspire them to break forth in every dimension of life and succeed in their God's given calling and assignment. 
May the wisdom of God overtake you and inspire you to become an inspiration to your world and make a difference with the gift of life, time, and your God-given resources in the name of Jesus. If you are watching this broadcast today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is the key, uh, the key thing here. Knowing Jesus and letting him come into your life will change everything. If you are watching this broadcast, wherever you are watching me from around the world, Jesus is coming soon and he wants you to receive him into your life. If you're not born again and you're watching this broadcast, could you repeat this after me? Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray that prayer with us, it means you're born again and the Holy Ghost is going to lead you from here. Praise the Lord. And also, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel as you'll be able to see our videos, our teachings. You know, it will help you grow and develop in your work with God. So, subscribe to Faith Man Teaching on YouTube. It's one of the places to be and to receive the engrafted word of God. And also, we encourage people to send us friends requests on Facebook. You can connect with us. You can connect with me, you know. You know, uh, you, you can reach out to me. Praise God. You can connect with me. We can pray for you. We can minister to you. You can send us friends requests on Faithman Obweather or Faithman Obweather Ministry. Which of the two accounts I will always receive your request and also be a blessing to you. It's our, our passion and our drive to teach you God's word and to help you fulfill the destiny that God has entrusted to your care. So also, you can consider being a partner to this ministry. It's always a joy when people partner together. So we're encouraging you to consider being a partner to this ministry and taking a love gift and sowing into the ground of this ministry. It goes a long way to help us subscribe and get more data bundles to be able to reach out to more people every day around the world. We do so much from here. So I want to encourage you to go to PayPal. It's faithmanteaching at gmail.com and take an offering and say, Apostle, I want to be a blessing. I want to support. I want to be part of those who are reaching more people. Thank you for going to faithmanteaching at gmail.com and sowing and being a blessing together. We are changing history and we're giving them a better history. God bless you. Until my next broadcast, don't ever forget this. There is greatness in you.